Acts 19, 11 to 20. How many of you like snakes? Okay, that's good. I'm preaching to the right people today. By the way, I just, I, one is going to be brought in here in a minute. No. <laughs> Here's some men ah, running out. Or <laughs> Not even the ladies. Ladies, what was that? <laughs> Well, I've read an article about a, um, a massive python that exploded. And what happened is this python saw an alligator. Who knows what an alligator is? He sees alligator and he sees, you know what, lunch comes early. So do you know how python works? They work by, by wrapping themselves around you, strangle you, take your life. Then they just begin to consume you. So this battle occurs and the python seems to get the best of this alligator that strangled him. He's, 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 he's dead. You know, when it, it, they swell up a bit, so he's swelled up, he's dead. So the python begins to consume slowly uh, this alligator. And when it finally gets this alligator that it thinks is dead, that's when the alligator decides to strike and it begins to eat the basically the, the python from the inside out and it bursts open. And the horrible is this horrible picture. If I could show you the picture, it is a horrible, horrible picture where both python and alligator die. You can see that was a kamikaze alligator tonight. I mean, he just he just he gave his life for the cause, and just and this horrible just this is explosion inside his stomach, and 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 just just horrible uh, uh, thing to see. Now tonight, you may say tonight this 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 Burmese python had eyes bigger than his belly. But tonight, I want to turn it around slightly and give you my spoon in it. I believe tonight this alligator, sorry, this python had bitten off more than he could chew. And tonight, I want to preach a sermon I've simply called, Don't Bite Off More Than You Can Chew. Let's read Acts chapter 19, 11 to 20. And we want to look at some men tonight who bit off more than they could chew. The Bible says, now God worked unusual miracles by the hand of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick. And the disease uh, left them, and the evil spirit went out of them. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exercise you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. So there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Then the man in whom the spirit, so the evil spirit was, leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them, so that they flew out of the house naked and wounded. This became known both to all Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds, also, many uh, of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all, and they counted up the value of them, and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. Verse 20, so the word of the Lord grew mightily and uh, prevailed. Father, tonight we are grateful again that you would gather us as your church. Lord, we need your word tonight, God, that we would be changed. We need changing, God, and only you with our cooperation can do that. I'm asking tonight, God, you would meet with the body of Christ represented here. Oh, God, tonight, this will not be, Lord, a, a regular Wednesday service, but God, I pray supernatural Father's things will take place in the hearts of your people, God. I thank you tonight. I'm asking you to speak tonight, Father, to deliver this word in the mighty name of 
of Jesus Christ and all God's people said, uh, amen and uh, amen. I want to look first of all very quickly at a worker of God, a work of God. In Acts chapter 19, we find the Apostle Paul, um, and he's on his third missionary trip, and he comes up um, to a place called Ephesus, uh, and he walks basically into an opportunity. Now, what we need to know about opportunity tonight is this. An opportunity is not just a window. An opportunity can also be a door. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 8 and 9, Paul writes, but I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost for a great door and effectual is open unto me and there are many adversaries. Now, many of you may have read this before, but what you need to understand is 1 Corinthians 16 is played out in Acts 19. In other words, you are seeing, you could say in real time, all Paul was speaking about in 1 Corinthians 16 all in Acts chapter 19, Ephesus tonight, he ends up in this place and it was a city, a great and also a wicked city. It was one of the, in fact, the main city of Asia Minor. It was a, literally, you could say the bedrock of Rome, but also this place is a place that is filled with wickedness. It was a place of spiritual darkness. And here is your possible, he comes there and he decides, I mean, by the spirit of God, he brings the glorious light of the gospel to that dark place. Tonight, many Christians tonight, amen, we don't want to be in a dark place. Many times we're looking for the nearest exit. The moment we enter into a dark place, we go to our place of labor and we begin to see there's so many people here that are lost. There's so many people here that are dark. There's so many people here and it's an ugly scene tonight. And the reality is many times we want a well-lit area. We want somewhere, amen, where light is all around us tonight. And we begin to complain about where we are, that we just need to get out because it's so dark. Now, I'm not saying tonight, amen, you and I need to be working in pubs or clubs but have you ever considered tonight that wherever you are laboring that God has put you there tonight he has put you there tonight because the bible says ye are the light of the world tonight and if there's one place a light needs to be it's in a dark place in fact the darker the room the more our light will be seen tonight tonight you and I do not stand out in the church where there are many other lights surrounding us you and I stand out in the marketplace. You and I stand out in the workplace. You and I stand out in dark places. And many times that is exactly where God wants us to be tonight. So here's Ephesus. Ephesus was a dark place. But in the midst of a dark place, we see a work of God tonight. Now listen to me very carefully tonight. A work of God is exactly what that is. It is a work of God. It is God doing the work. Because at times we're going to see people and they're going to impress us by what they do. And maybe they, they, they give us a wow effect. We're impressed by their lives. We're impressed by certain things or certain acts they do. But what we must see tonight, church, is many times we are caught up amen, in a person when it's actually God, the, the one who is doing the work. In verse 11 of our text, the Bible tells us these words, now God worked. In other words, what was happening in Ephesus was not a work of Paul. It was a work of God tonight. And what we see tonight is the other part of this. The Bible says, now God worked by the hand of Paul. Listen, church, this is not new. In Mark chapter 16, verse 20, the Bible says, and they went out and preached everywhere. Here, here it is tonight. The Lord working with them and confirming the word through the company signs. Amen. This is the final chapter, the final verse of the gospel of Mark. And the Bible tells the disciples, they go everywhere. They're preaching. And the Bible adds on to let us know that God was working with them. God was confirming the preaching by way of signs and by way of wonders tonight. So here is Paul tonight. Paul, you can say it, he's the human focal point of these miracles that God was working tonight, but he did not do the miracles. The Bible tells us who's really doing the miracles. The Bible says, now God worked. See, anytime you see somebody do something great for God, let me tell you what it involves tonight. It involves a work of God tonight and a surrendered will. That when you see somebody doing something great, 
when you see somebody and they stand out tonight, when you see, you can see an anointing upon somebody's life, make no mistake tonight, it is not that person. It is a work of God and it is a surrendered will. It is somebody saying, God, not my will. Let your will be done. I have an agenda. I have a plan. There are certain things I would do, but tonight I'm putting that aside so you can have the limelight, so you can have center stage. And when that person, when that man, when that woman surrenders, I want to tell you something tonight, I mean, powerful things happen tonight, church. See, tonight God can save through you. God can heal through you. God can bring deliverance through you. God can move and do the supernatural and the miraculous through you. It is the work of God tonight, but you must understand, church, it is God working through us both to will and to do his good pleasure tonight. It is not you. It is not me. It is not the ushers. It is not the musicians tonight. It is a God in heaven tonight who desires to work for ordinary people. So hey, Paul tonight, Paul understands something, that if I'm going to be used by God, if something great is going to happen in Ephesus, it is not going to happen by me. It is going to happen through me. That is not going to happen because I did it or because I showed up. It is going to happen because God worked through me. And I'll tell you right now, church, if you and I try to do anything without God, we are biting off more than we can chew tonight. So let's consider the folly of men. Because a move of God is always accompanied by change. And when I say change, it is usually a change of lives. An alcoholic became a believer. And he was asked whether he could possibly believe in, 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 in the nonsense of the Bible. Somebody says, do you believe all the nonsense? The Bible says all these miracles. Do you actually believe that Jesus turned water into wine? And the alcoholic says, I do believe Jesus turned water into wine. Because in my house, Jesus turned whiskey into furniture. Because you understand something tonight, church. That when God begins to move upon a man or a woman tonight, change must take place tonight. There has to be a change. You cannot remain the same. You cannot be the same tonight. Listen, in our text, people were being saved. They were being filled with the Holy Ghost. They were prophesying. They were growing more in God and learning more about God. In verse 11, the Bible says these words that unusual miracles were happening. Let me pause and say this in our church. There are miracles and there are miracles. Because in the Bible, you see so many miracles. But the Bible doesn't, doesn't mince words. It, says, it didn't say these were miracles. It says these were unusual miracles. That people would come to Paul. That Paul is a tent maker. He's working in the heat of the Palestinian sun tonight. Amen. And he would come. He would work. And, and people would come to him. And he would have his handkerchief to, 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 to douse his mind, his, uh, his head to remove uh, uh, some of the, uh, uh, the sweat like I've got tonight. Amen. And the Bible says people would take him in the flannel. They go to somebody sick. They put it on them. And the person instantly gets healed. Here is a man tonight, you could say, who has some sanctified sweat tonight. Here's a man tonight, a man who was so touched up and so filled by God, even his apron that he would use to work. People would take that and they will lay it upon people and deliverance would take place tonight. Listen to me tonight, church. People saw what Paul were doing. And in our text tonight, the Bible says some men saw what Paul were doing and they wanted the same. Now, let me say this. It's not wrong to desire godly things. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 12, 31, covered earnestly the best gifts. That even here we are told to covet, to desire the best gifts that God gives us. And it's speaking, the context is about spiritual gifts, that we have to covet it. We have to want it. We have to desire it tonight. Sometimes we see preachers and we admire them, amen, over their eloquence and maybe over how they carry themselves and amen, how they connect with people and the word, amen, how God is using them. And tonight, I want to say something, that's completely okay. That is valid. That is good tonight. But in our text tonight, we find some men, seven of them, and they wanted what Paul was doing. The only problem tonight is this. They wanted what Paul had or what Paul was doing without God. You see, and like this anaconda that swallowed this crocodile, it blew up on them. And I want to look at three things tonight 
That is the folly of men when they bite off more than they can chew. Number one tonight, we need to understand that many things tonight are easier said than done. How many times have you seen somebody do something? And maybe you said it out loud. Maybe you thought to yourself, I can do that. We see some guy maybe lift some things. I can do that. We see some girl like, she ain't that nice. I say for you ladies. We see somebody, we see somebody uh, 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 very clever says, well, you know, he ain't that clever. And in our mind, we're saying, I can do that tonight. But the reality is when we end up trying to attempt those things that we said is so easy, we find out very, very quickly tonight that many things are easier said than done. Okay. There are many people here tonight, you envision playing an instrument. Go on now. I'm waiting. Some of you in that drug and by all means go. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I dare you. Because it's not as easy as it looks. I remember the first time, I, 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 I like music. I enjoy music. And I look at the drums and I, can, I love the beat and the rhythm. And I, and I had like, I can do that. When I sat behind the drums and I thought, you know, it's going to be so simple. Just kind of, you know, that, that. Like, it was an abomination of desolation. It was horrible. Because listen, it's not as, it's, listen, it, it, come on, you know, some of you think, you know, I just get behind here and you know what, uh, you know, I just uh, play a few things, I just slide my hands. Again, by all means, show us how it's done. Because in your mind, I remember, some of you remember doing um, a, a fellowship we had in the park one time and I raced Jamal. In my mind, I was still 18 years old. In my mind, I thought it's over for this guy. He doesn't know what he's dealing with. What? Second fastest in middle sex? He's crazy. He's in my head. But you see, it, it, it was like the old song. My, my, <laughs> my mind is telling me yes, but my body is telling me no. It just wasn't going to happen. It was just uh-uh. And the guy left me for dead without even trying. <laughs> Because many things <laughs> is easier said than done. Here are these guys tonight. They have been watching Paul. And in their mind, easy work. In their mind tonight, this is a minor. In their mind, I've got this. But by the end of the day, the demon had them. Because things, let me say again, they are not as easy as it looks. See, some of the mistakes that we have made in our lives tonight, we've had to pay for them. And some, some of us tonight, we are still paying for those same mistakes. There are people here tonight, you've, you've said those words, those dreaded words, I will change him. How's that going for you, by the way? I will change her. We, we, listen, we, the, the people, the, so, some of us tonight, amen, our eyes were bigger than our bank account. And now we're in debt. And now, mind you, know what? It's just, a, it's just, it's just, just, just like the commercial says, just a few, a few payments of, of 20 pounds, you know, each month, and you can have this thing. Well, that 20 pounds, you didn't do the small print. That 20 pounds, after two months, that was now 200 pounds. Because many times things are easier said than done. So many things we thought we could handle only to find out that we could not handle them when we became addicted, broken, broke, and we found out very quickly that we have bitten off more than we could chew. The second thing is this. Past success is not an indication of future endeavors. Let me translate what that means tonight. I got away with it before. I'll do it again. Listen to me tonight, church. It's very, very possible the men in our text had some level of success in the past. What do I mean? The Bible calls them Jewish exorcists. 
Listen to me, Jews believed in demons and they will cast them out. In fact, Jesus refers to them in Luke chapter 11, verse 19, when the Pharisees were saying that he was doing his miracles by Beelzebub, the Lord of the demons. And he replies and he says, and if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? So it's very, very possible, listen, in the past, these men had some level of success. So what we're speaking about tonight is not unusual. By the way, tonight, if you don't believe in demons tonight, it may be a demon that is inside of you that is telling you that it's not real tonight. Now listen to me, maybe they had some level of success in the past. And tonight, maybe you had some level of success in the past. I wonder how many people here, you've stolen something before and you got away with it. Nobody here. Give the, give, the, give the recording to somebody else. That when you take something that doesn't belong to you and nobody, nobody's there to reprimand you, nobody's there to catch your hands in the deeds tonight, amen. What it does, it, 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 it encourages you to do it again. Because, you know, I got away with it before. Guess what? I can, go, I can get away with it again. Listen, I know guys who have been shot and now they think they're invisible because they survived. They think that no, they think they're untouchable. They think they think they think that you know that somehow they they they're exempt from things tonight because they survived an attempt upon their life. Listen to me tonight, church. You are going to come to a place where you will bite off more than you can chew. Here's Adam and Eve tonight. They're in the garden. God has provided for them in this paradise everything they want. The Bible tells us Eve goes to the tree. She, she, she should not be anywhere around. She takes up the fruit and she bites and she eats. And guess what? Nothing. She gives now to her husband, the dundus who's standing next to her. He gives, she gives him this fruit. And the Bible says the moment he bites it now, the Bible says his words, now their eyes, not hers, not his, their eyes were open. Why? Because the minion was given to Adam. And the moment he bit the fruit, all hell broke loose, you can say tonight. Listen to me very carefully tonight, church. Many times we look at people tonight uh, and we look at other people uh, and we say, listen, they did it and nothing happened to them. I have to wonder tonight, man, is that what happened with Elimelech and family tonight? Here they are, they're in Bethlehem, Judah. The Bible says a famine was in the land. And the Bible tells us, amen, that Bethlehem, Judah was the place of bread where God was blessing. But it became a place, amen, where God removed his hands because of the disobedience of his people. And here they are, after one tonight, amen, did Elimelech and Naomi see other couples leave Bethlehem, Judah after a period of time. And they came back and they thought to themselves, you know what, maybe we need to leave, but we're going to come back. Maybe we need to go, but well, things are bad right now. But listen, we're going to come back. How many people don't know Elimelech didn't come back tonight? His sons didn't come back, not on the Chilion. The only person that came back was Naomi. She comes back a widow. Because again, in their minds tonight, maybe others went up and the things were tougher and they maybe worked it out and they came back. Up. But let me, let's, just, let's do the same thing. We're not going to be, we're not going to be too far. We're not going to go too long. The Bible says to go to sojourn in Moab. That means they were going to stay there for a little bit of time, but plan to come back and none of them but one person came back alive. I want to deny the man if that's the same issue with the people of Malachi's day. That they saw other people robbing God. And they thought to themselves, if they could do it. You know how we justify things in our minds in our church? That once I saw out this debt, once I take off my finances, then I will. Let me say something tonight. You got yourself in debt. You're going to need God to get you out of it tonight. And robbing things don't make things better. They make things worse. So are these men tonight? What am I saying? Make sure tonight you don't compare yourselves with other people. Because we see them do it, but when we do it, it's a different story. And these men, they compared themselves to poor. And therefore, if Paul can do this, surely we can do the same thing. When I was reading about this um, python that swallowed this um, uh, alligator, 
it's not unusual for pythons and alligators to attack each other. They, they actually common enemies. And, and the article said basically when, 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 they, when, when the, um, they removed the alligator from the python's belly, they, you know how the scientists are, I don't know why they do what they do. They decided to do like an autopsy, you know, why he died, it's pretty obvious, you know. But they did, you know, they, 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 they took it out and et cetera. And they found other bits of alligator inside the python. And it's, they deduced that this python had got victory over an alligator before in the past. So hearing in his mind, I did it once, I can do it again. But this time, it bit off more that it could chew. The last thing tonight is you will receive pushback. So like I mentioned earlier tonight, there are miracles and there are miracles. Let me tell you again tonight, there are demons and there are demons. Because before these men had dealt with what I call tiny D. But this time they were going to deal with bigger D. Before they had, they had, they had some form of victory, some form of success, some, of, some form of result over a small demon. But now they have no idea what they're dealing with tonight. See, what they were doing was not unusual, and I've said this before. But what was unusual about this is they tried to do it in the name of Jesus that they did not believe in. Sceva was a Jewish high priest. In other words, this is not a small boy. This is a serious man. So the Bible doesn't even tell us their name. Just tell us they are the sons of Sceva. He's a Jewish high priest. He's the, he's the main high priest in town. And here are the sons of this man. They thought because daddy was a religious spiritual leader. They thought because daddy had a relationship with God. They thought because daddy had a place or position in the church. They thought because daddy was a prayer warrior. Therefore, because daddy, amen, had a communication and relationship with God, that somehow tonight, amen, that made them automatically qualified to do religious work. And I love what the demon says. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? Jesus, I know. Do you know there are two no's at work there? The first no is not like the second no. In other words, when, when, when the demon said to these men, Jesus, I know, is not the same no that he gave to Paul. What do I mean tonight? Jesus, I know. Jesus, no, is to know by experience or knowledge that is acquired. Imagination nation. For those who know, you know. Imagine tonight, here's this man, he's demon possessed. And here's the sons of Sceva. They try to cast out the demon. And the, G, the, the man says, listen, I know Jesus by experience. And here's me. I don't think it's far stretched from this. I wonder tonight, was he around? Was that demon around when Legion was cast out of that man? I wonder tonight, man. He said, yeah, yeah, I remember Jesus quite well. Oh, he's a serious guy. Yeah, that guy, Legion, he had, he had, he had, he had a foul, two thousand of my friends inside of him. I was going to join the party, but I decided to see one dude in the corner, just by me and he just had a house of myself. But there's too many, the house is too crowded. And I watched him cast them out. And, the, and they went into a pig, and the pigs went running over the cliff. And they, you know what? I think, oh, hey, listen, I'm, I know Jesus. I, I've experienced Jesus. Now, when he says about Paul tonight, Paul, I know, it means by proximity or prolonged attention. In other words, I've been close to Paul. I've paid attention to Paul. I've watched Paul, how he carries himself, what he does. I can see that he's a spiritual man. I can see he's a godly man. I can see, in other words, tonight, this guy, because I've been paying attention to him, he's the real deal. He's not a fake Christian. He's filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, I know him. But who are you? Let me put it to you another way. He was saying there's nothing in hell that scares us about you. 
Can I ask you a question tonight? Does hell know your name? If your, if your name was wrung out through hell, would they, would, they, would they shudder, shake, or would they fall asleep? He says, I know Jesus. I know Paul. But um, who are you? You know what's sad tonight? There are people who you and I know tonight who once used to live for God but are no longer living for God. There are people tonight who are once behind the pulpit. There are people tonight amen, who are in the pew and you can say they had a powerful ministry. They had a powerful reputation tonight. But today, some of them are in prison. Today, some of them are on drugs. Today, some of them, amen, are immoral. Today, some of them are messed up. And here they are, they spend years trying to cast demons out of people when in fact the demon was in them. And you can say that I hear are men tonight who bit of more than they could chew. So I want to close quickly, look at a great turnaround. Because here is this demon that beats them up so badly that they're stripped naked and they run out of place. Imagine they're running down the streets of Ephesus naked, seven men. Horrible scene. Horrible mental picture right there. My listen to that church, no one likes shame and embarrassment. And at times tonight, shame and embarrassment happens because things don't work out the way we thought. I'm going to cast out this demon out of this man and everyone's going to love us. Everyone's going to parade us through the town and we're going to have the special place among people's hearts because we cast out Big D. This has been tonight, church. Let me throw this out for free. I didn't say it before. Don't go looking for demons. Don't do it. I remember when we were new converts and I, we thought we were the Christian Ghostbusters. And we went looking for demons and it didn't end up very well. Because in the Bible, you don't see people going looking for demons. It doesn't. You don't. What happened when, when Legion saw Jesus? What happened? He came to. Jesus didn't want to go there. Jesus, he came to him. You know, the man with the, with the son who, who had, was, uh, had the demon spirit in him and was throwing him in the fire and trying, throwing him in the water, trying to uh, drown him, fire, try and burn him. They brought him to. Listen, don't go looking for demons tonight. Again, these are not the ghost busters. These are not the demon busters tonight. It won't work out very well for you. Now, you would think tonight, because all that has happened, you would think tonight it brought some negative press to the gospel. Here are these so-called godly men trying to cast out a demon, and the demon ended up beating them black and blue. You would have thought, you would have thought that this is horrible uh, a press uh, uh, for the gospel. That, you know, did you hear what happened? Did you hear what happened? Did, did you hear? Did you hear? And no, no, oh, that church. So, you know, no, 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 no. Let me tell you something I've learned tonight. I say this has become slowly become my favorite scripture, and we know that all things work together for good for those who love God and those who are the called according to his purpose. Listen to me, Paul was that such tonight. Paul loved God and Paul was called according to the purposes of God. And there are three things tonight I want to look at quickly before we pray tonight. Number one tonight, what took place produced a fresh reverence for God. In verse 17, when the news spread, the Bible says fear fell on all. This is not dread. This is reverence tonight. Fear fell on all. It's almost as if news began to go in town. And people say, did you hear what happened to those guys there in, 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 in Ephesus? What, what, what happened? Well, to some guys, they, they were fake Christians. They tried to cast out this demon. And the demon ended up beating them black and blue and, and stripping them naked. And they were running down the street, the high road. Just, and you know what the reaction with the people were? All of a sudden, I have no doubt people's mind, you know what, I need to fix up. I need to get some things right in me. Because I don't want that to be me. Listen, every time somebody falls tonight, it should be a warning for us to get right with God. 
Every time somebody amen tonight, amen, is busted tonight, it should be a warning for you and I, amen. We need to get this right. Because listen to me tonight. You need to be asking God if I'm not singing right. God, if I'm not preaching right, God, if I'm not ushering right, God, if I'm not doing the Sunday school right, God, if I'm not living right tonight, then God, you need to get me right. Tonight, God help you tonight if you turn your nose upon people tonight and begin to look at them and say, how could they do that? How could they do that? Listen, that could be your son. That could be your daughter. That could be your best friend. God help you, that could be you tonight. And tonight, listen, sometimes somebody getting judged ought to be a motivation for you to get right. Number two tonight, people got serious about God. Verse 18. In verse 18, the Bible says these words. And many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. People were coming clean over secret sin. These new believers, they saw this demon attack this counterfeit Christians, you can say. And they got under the conviction of God. And they thought to themselves, you know what? I, need to, I better fix up. I better deal with this. I need to get this right. See, when Jesus is magnified tonight, sin gets dealt with. Here is Isaiah tonight. Isaiah is a prophet. He's the best of all men. But when he gets in the presence of God, he says, woe is I. He says, I'm unclean. I'm going to let the Holy Spirit leave it there tonight. But lastly tonight, I know they were serious because they proved it with a sincere response. There's a story about two friends. I'm going to call them John and, and Tommy. And John says to Tommy, Tommy, if you had a million pounds, would you give me half of it? John says, listen, hey, if I had a million pounds, I'll give you 500,000 pounds. Say, listen, John, if, I, if you had uh, 500 pounds, will you give me half of it? So listen, if I had 500 pounds, 250 is yours. He said, John, if you had 100 pounds, would you give me half of it? Listen, if I had 100 pounds, 100 pounds, listen, bro, it's yours. He says, John, if you had two pigs, you give me one? Why you say that for? You know I've got two pigs. You know what the problem with you and I is tonight? We love giving up things we don't want or we don't need. Here comes the problem. What happens when God wants what we have? Because it's very easy for us to say, I, 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 you know, if I had a million pounds, I'll give, I'll give half a million to God. Nobody here has, has a million pounds. No one person here. But if you do, well, I'd like to know you, but you don't. <laughs> <laughs> It was quite like, but that's the truth. It's very easy for us to promise things that we don't have. See, verse 19 says that they added up what, they had all these books, magic books, and they added up the cost of it. And it came to, I believe, 50,000 pieces of silver. Many Bible scholars have debated how much this comes up to. But let me tell you how much comes up to a heck of a lot of money. A heck of a lot of money. They took all these books. They, today we'll call them Harry Potter books. They take all their books, all the books of occultic practices and occultic uh, uh, things. And they took it. And the Bible says they brought it and they burnt it. When I got saved, I had some CDs and I burnt it. Even though friends once say, hey, I'll take you off you, don't do that. I don't want you to get the same demon I have, so I'm going to burn it. Burnt it. These were things very, very close to me. And I'll say this tonight, church. 
Maybe some of us tonight need to go home and pour something out. Maybe some of us need to go home and throw something away. Maybe some of us need to go home and delete something that should not be there, that we've kept for a while. Maybe some, maybe we, we maybe need to go home and flush something away. Maybe tonight, I mean, we need to simply begin to put our home in order, get some, get, get some dominion tonight. Maybe even tonight, maybe you need to get married. I don't know. But here's the deal tonight. You may say this is too much, but no, it's not too much. It's called sacrifice. And when you sacrifice tonight, you are saying God is worth it. And he's worth it. Why? Because he sent his son Jesus to die for your sins and my sins tonight. He paid a real price for you and me. So this altar tonight, amen, as we come to this altar tonight, amen, let's not come, amen, and bring, amen, what we don't have. Let's bring tonight what we do have that is precious, but is not pleasing before his sight. Let's bow his and close our eyes tonight, amen. Amen. Every head bowed, every eyes closed. Very quickly tonight, maybe you're in this service, you're not right with God. Tonight, God loves you. The Bible says he doesn't wish any to perish. He doesn't desire any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But tonight, you need to make a decision over your sin and your Savior. Because there's only one Savior tonight. And it's not money, it's not car, it's not a boyfriend or a girlfriend, it's not a husband, it's not a wife, it's not money, amen, it's not a job tonight. It is Jesus Christ. He's the only one who died for your sins. He's the only one who paid the price for your sins. He's the only one who can give you victory over your sin. And it is him tonight, amen, you are to choose over everything else, but the choice is yours. Tonight, very quickly, you hear under the sound of my voice tonight, and God is dealing with you. Say, Pastor, you pray with me. I want to give my life to Christ. If that's you, we just lift your hand up and put it down tonight. Very quickly, we can pray tonight. Maybe you're here, you're backslidden, you're away from God tonight. Amen. Maybe you, you took the role of Elimelech and Naomi, and, and, and you, you looked at others going into the world and says, I, I won't be long. I just need just going to do a few things. I, I, never, I never tried it before. I, I've always been back in my mind, and I've seen them go, and I've seen them come back. Let me, let me, let me go, and let me come back. And tonight, amen. By the grace of God, you find yourself back. But you're scarred. You're beaten. You're bruised. And you're not the same person. You may not be the same person tonight, but Jesus is still the same Lord and God. And he still loves you and he still loves you.